What's up everyone, welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin, and welcome to the basement movie theater in the, the Durbin Compound. So, from the previous video I put out uh, last week, the basement bar video, I had mentioned my movie theater, um, and a lot of people were asking about it. So, behind me is uh, basically, I'm standing in my theater room here. Um, it's connected to the bar and dining area down here in the basement. So, I wanted to go over some details on the, the projects that um, I did down here and exactly you know what what I did to make this space happen. So when when I moved in, uh, this this whole area in here had a drop ceiling in it. So um, if you can imagine down to the bottom of where the wood was, uh, or you can see the wood beam here, down to the bottom of that was a drop ceiling, and it had fluorescent lights, carpet in here, um, and beadboard all over the wall. So I knew immediately from when I moved in, I wanted to make this space, you know, pop a little bit and actually have some functionality. So uh, let's take you around the room a little bit. I'll show you some separate projects that I did over a course of an entire summer and completed this entire basement. So little by little, I worked through uh, all the things that I had to do, re-drywall, uh, rewire, uh, basically anything and everything that you see, I redid. So. Um, I'll roll in some camera footage, uh, some pictures that I have of stuff during the project. So exactly where you, you the camera is sitting right now, or where you're viewing this from, used to be a wall. And in that wall had a jack post. Some people call it a jack post, some people call it a lolly column, but it was directly right in the middle of where the camera is sitting now. So I had a small doorway and then I had a lolly column. So one of the things I had to do was put in a beam to support the rest of the house because um, the corner of basically the second story and then the kitchen comes down right in the middle of that area there. So I had to take out that lolly column and I had to put in a uh, laminated veneer lumber beam. Um, and I actually put in one that was rated for a 40 foot gap, a 40 foot span. So I used 11 and 7 eighths um, LVL and I bolted three of them together so it basically covers this 12 foot gap in between so as I'm as I'm talking I'm gonna roll in some footage of exactly what I did then I had to add some more jack posts on either side to support my LVL so uh, I just have pictures of that process I wasn't I didn't have the YouTube uh, channel up and going at that point so otherwise I would have documented it like that so that's basically the start to this entire project before I did really anything else. That lolly column had to come out and I had to put an, L an LVL in so that I got rid of my, my wall here. So um, let's go ahead and take you, uh, let's talk about um, some of the features that I put down here. Uh, right now I only have a 70 inch TV here. Uh, this is a Sharp Aquio 70 inch behind me. Um, I hope you can see it well enough. Um, it looks small on this wall, so uh, what I really would like to do is get a projection, projection screen, um, kind of get a more minimalistic type um, TV stand underneath for all of my electronics, um, and maybe my two-channel uh, hi-fi separate system in the future. Um, so uh, I want to do that and uh, basically you know, get a bigger screen out of it, but the 70 inch does a pretty good job for what I have right now. So. Um, you know, that, that's, about it. that's about it on that. Let's walk around here. I'll show you uh, the brick columns that I put up around my lolly columns or my jack posts. All right, so this is just off of the camera from where you were sitting before. Um, you were up here on the dining room table uh, before. So now I've got you down on the floor so you can see this entire column. So my LVL goes across right through here. Uh, they had I have my, uh, an extra lolly column or a jack post on the outside of this wall. So this is you know, a drywall wall along with the other wall. But when I put my LVL up, I didn't go into the existing wall. I put the jack post on the outside of the wall. So it basically stuck out on the corner. So one thing that I came up with was to do uh, these brick columns. So these are full brick. Uh, these are, uh, the color is Knob Hill. Um, what I went through and did is just hand built this wall. I, uh, I'm not a mason, masonry guy. Um, I do a lot of premium uh, tile work, but as far as masonry and building a block wall, this was my first time, so it um, came out pretty nice. Uh, I just literally stacked it up, so if I ever need to do work on the, on the jack post or anything, these, these brick have to come down. So um, I basically just planned it to 
to go around and hide it and go with the theme of my basement. So uh, behind this this brick here is three three lolly columns or three jack posts. So it, it's a huge uh, plant right here. Um, down underneath the concrete is one of my two foot by two foot footers. So I have three posts sitting on my uh, my two foot footer supporting the rest of the house this is basically the the corner beam of the house if you want to call it um, goes all the way up to the second story and into the the top of the house so very crucial um, very crucial spot of the house so that's how I did that all right so I just realized that I could back you guys up on the bar and you could actually see what I'm referring to right here so this this area here used to be a wall and I had the jack post here. So I went ahead and put the beam in over top and you can see my brick column here and my brick column here hiding my jack posts that are on the outside of the wall. So just roll, I'll roll in that to show you just a, a little bit bigger picture where you were sitting on the table before, I've got you backed up on the bar. So now you can see into the whole space. So should have thought about that before, but I'm not gonna re-record it. Candid as always. All right, so now for this clip, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna roll in a uh, uh, basically a 360 view of this room while I'm talking. So one of the things that I had to do was I had a 45 degree angle on one of the corners over here because uh, where my where my sewer pipe goes out into the uh, septic system, it's not actually in the corner. So I have to have that 45 in order to have the pipe wrap around and go out of the wall. So in order to stay with the same theme of a 45 degree angle, I made two other 45 degree uh, wall corners that were symmetrical. So one of the things that I decided to do was this, this thin brick. So basically what I did is put up cement backer board. Um, I, I attached it to the studs, built a stud wall, um, put outlets um, and uh, lighting control and stuff like that in it so that I could have my lights overhead. And then I had um, my, my backer board up on the wall and then all I did was literally just um, mortar my bricks up to it and build the wall with spacers uh, and it's the thin brick so if you think about a full-size brick all they do is cut the face of the brick off so you have about uh, about a half an inch to five eighths uh, uh, thick brick and literally just um, mortar them on any wall you want so it turned out quite nice and then you go through and you mortar it with a mortar bag and uh, it turns out like that the lights I got off Amazon I just literally search around for little copper themed lights. I wanted that rustic industrial feel so I went through and got those lights and uh, made them dimmable and they look sweet so you can ramp them up. You can dim them down while you're watching movies. Um, I make everything dimmable in here so that you can really tone it down and it gives you that that, um, that cozy kind of feel. You can already tell that the kind of lights that I have in here are already uh, very, they're not very bright. I had LEDs in here, but when you come when it goes to dim in LEDs, sometimes they'll blink. So you're actually seeing the LEDs blink. Um, so I, I decided to get rid of those. I went with an incandescent, a warm incandescent that you could dim down and made it look really sweet. So yeah, it's just thin brick on the walls. Um, if you guys are interested in the actual company, I'll put it in the description. You can see uh, what, what I'll do in the description is I'll put a lot of the items that I've used or or if I can find them on the internet again, I'll, sh I'll show you what I've used so that if you like it and you say, hey, I wanna do exactly that, then you can click through the link and, and uh, see where I got it or sourced it from. So uh, I did the, this exact same thing I did on that adjacent corner, as you saw in the 360 degree. Um, and then directly behind the camera or on the adjacent side of the room, I made a little nook for my freezer because I needed to have a deep freezer here stored in the house and so I made a little cubby. So it's kind of dead space around the freezer, but I built it just out far enough that the freezer goes all the way in and hits the wall. And that's basically all she wrote. Um, so yeah, let's move you around. We'll talk about the shiplap wall. So if you're wondering what I'm standing on, this is Rambo's bed. He gets a king size bed on every floor of this house. So he's spoiled as heck, but um, let's go over a couple things that I did here. Um, this back feature wall is painted a different color. It's actually a darker gray than my walls. What I did was, is I decided to go with a, a shiplap theme. Um, and you can see the random pattern here in the shiplap wall. What I did was take a Luon board. So that uh, 0.8 or that eight millimeter thick uh, underlayment that you put down or Luon board is what they call it. 
Um, usually I've always referred to it as Lou on board, but it's underlayment for um, uh, sheet goods like linoleum or a premium vinyl tile or something like that. So all I did was take these into eight inch strips. So all I did was take the sheet down the table saw and rip it into eight inch sheets. And so that gives me my, how wide my, my, uh, you know, my shiplap is. And then I literally just started a random pattern at the bottom. I chopped it, you know, three feet or whatever, and then started a random pattern. And then as I went down, I just chopped it at the other end and I, I put it up here with a brad nailer and just nailed it into the studs. So real easy to do. I spaced it with, uh, I think, nickels. So I put a nickel in between each one, and that was my spacing. So it gives you that that uh, that spacing look so you can actually see a space in between it. Then after that, all I did was go through and paint it. It was kind of a pain in the butt to paint it after the fact because going in all the little grooves and getting back in there with, the, with a uh, paintbrush was a pain in the butt. So um, if I were to do it again, I would paint all the sides and paint the wall behind and then put it up. Um, and all the sides, I mean, around the edges, so that I don't have to go through with a little brush and do all of the all of the cracks. That was kind of stupid and a pain in the butt. So, if you guys were paying attention to the video and what's behind me, I move around a lot. But um, if you pay attention to my two outlets here, um, basically what I have is dedicated 20 amp outlets. So I have three of them on this wall, dedicated 20 amps. So this is for my two channel setup when I start getting into um, my hi-fi speakers and I want to put uh, big speakers here, big towers on each side and then I have a dedicated 20 amp for all of my components. So what I want to do is uh, be able to have that dedicated power, um, um, get rid of that 60 hertz hum. Um, some of you might know what I'm talking about, some of you might be, you know, whatever. But uh, I, I basically ran three separate circuits for just this wall um, on top of what I already have and what I'm actually using for the TV. Um, that way, my TV and uh, my DVD player and all that stuff is on a separate circuit than my speakers. Uh, it gets rid of a lot of cross interference that could be you know, detrimental in the future to hi-fi sound. So just to let you know what that's all about. All right, so I'll roll you guys over to my TV stand here. Um, this is kind of work in progress. I kind of went for a, a steampunk uh, feel. Um, my, my grandfather actually gave me an acetylene generator, so it turned out to be a, uh, a nice prop. So if you don't know anything about acetylene generators and acetylene lamps back in the day, this is what they used for light. So they had the acetylene generator and then a tube, and then literally lit it like a Bunsen burner, and that's how you lit your shop or whatever it was. Um, sometimes these, these would be hanging upside down, and then you'd have your your gas lamps basically. So that's a nice cool prop. I've never thought about getting it going. So uh, this workbench is an old workbench that came out of a shop. Um, and all I did was, uh, all I did was pressure wash it and it looks pretty darn good. It's got a nice patina. But yeah, that's about it. This is my 70 inch Sharp Aquios and I've had this TV for a while. It is a monster. Um, it's heavy. You can't, one person can't carry it. Um, it's a beast. Uh, for all of my for all of my surround sound and all that stuff that I did with that I ran a PVC pipe up through the wall so I've got a two inch PVC pipe that goes up through the wall it's basically sandwiched in between the drywall um, and the concrete outside uh, or the you know the concrete wall for the basement and then I just put an elbow at each end and so if I need to run wire speaker wire power wire or anything like that I can run it up through there and then once I, once I get my projector, I can wire it and do all of those things. But uh, that makes it real easy and it's nice and big so the wires don't get caught on each other. It's super nice and super slick. Two more things I wanted to talk about in the basement area. Um, one was the ceiling. So the ceiling is obviously black. Uh, what I did was a lot of people will ask if I rolled it or I brushed it and I did not. Um, if you haven't watched my uh, previous videos, uh, I might even link a uh, link to my website uh, where I show the process of actually painting it or uh, what, it, what I have is a Graco paint sprayer and I've done a review on that on my, on my blog. You can go over there and check that out. Uh, but all I did was spray the paint on the ceiling. So before I did anything else down here, the paint went on the ceiling. So all in all, this entire space took 20 gallons of paint. So I literally bought like two or three loaves out of black pigment to, to, 
tint the paint. So I used a Valspar Storm Coat. It's an outdoor paint and uh, it's kettle black and I, I got flat. Obviously you want flat so it doesn't reflect any light. So when you have down lighting and you don't have a lot of up lighting, uh, uh, highlighting the black, it really just, you cannot see anything. You can see like obviously the rafters and you can see the stuff, but you can't see spots that you miss or anything like that. So the second coat was literally going around with a flashlight and uh, finding the spots and spraying them again. So it really doesn't have to be that anal. You literally just go around and spray it and it's pretty good to go. Um, that was kind of a pain because after I got everything done, uh, after I painted the whole ceiling and then I had other things to do, like I wanted to do um, kitchen cabinet lights and I had to run another circuit, well that wire all the way across all the way across the basement had to be painted black. So you're in there like painting every little outlet box black that you put in after the fact. So that was kind of a pain. I should have planned that a little bit better, but you know, it's it's <clears throat> it's not a game changer. You literally just go paint the stuff black again. So now let's talk about the floor. So the floor um, I'm, maybe I'll get a better angle. Let's see if I can find a better angle for you guys to see the floor. And I'll roll in some content, um, some pictures of me doing the floor. We'll talk about um, the, the floor. And I'll probably do another video just on the floor because it was a lengthy process and it's something that I can probably talk about for a long time. You know what, actually that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make that a completely separate video. I'll probably shoot that tonight. Um, if you want to check that out, it'll be out in the near future. Uh, maybe even be out on well, today's, um, this video is going to come out on Thursday. So I'll have a, uh, a video on the acetone dye and the floor process on Saturday. How's that sound? So if you're watching this in its entirety, you can, uh, you can plan on that acetone dye and that, that um, floor video on Saturday. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and bring the camera up and I want to shoot it back this direction. All right guys, so that's basically a tour of the theater room and some things I had planned in the future. Um, another thing that I had planned in the future that I wanted to talk about before I ended the video was I was going to put a bar up here behind the couch. So if you're watching this video to the point where we're talking about this, I would like you to comment below and let me know if it's something that you think would be cool is putting a bar back here and I can put the high top chairs, I can get more high top chairs like I have at the bar and there's basically going to be a bar around the back of this couch so that you can have people sit here during a game or maybe a movie and then you can also have people having drinks people can stand at the bar it's going to be a little it's going to be a bar height and then you can also have people sitting at the bar so you'll have room for the chairs to come back and you'll have room so that um, you know people aren't uh, people aren't uh, right on top of you but I'll probably do big black iron pipe and secure it to the floor and then have a big rustic wood top to it um, that's cleared, uh, probably clear coat and all that stuff and then I'll angle it around, um, do that kind of thing. So if you think I should do something like that or have an idea with it, um, go ahead and comment below. I'd love to hear, um, hear your reactions to that and, and what you think about that. But if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the basement. Um, if you're wondering what kind of wood this is, this is uh, wormy chestnut, so literally just 45 angles, not really anything crazy. Wormy chestnut is, is cool and it looks awesome. Old barn wood, um, for the most part, just old wood barn beams, barn wood beams, whatever. So um, if you've made it to this point, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and click subscribe. I'd love to see you around the channel. And as always, we'll see you guys next video.